Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Today we're talking with Nathan Butler. I missed him. Yes, he was a very... So Nathan Butler played Dr. Ewan. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, they should bring him back now that Franco has the brain tumor and he can save Franco, but then him and Elizabeth can start having feelings for But he's a psychologist. I don't care. He can't do anything with the tumor. Yes, he can. Is he going to psychoanalyze the tumor down? Yes. Maybe he will. Well... Whatever, you have been doing stuff that is not infectious disease and everybody else coming back. But there is a difference between a surgical maybe and a psychological. Maybe. Well, he's been gone all this time. He went and got that degree too. You don't Boom. know. Boom. So there. It works. That's what he did. Yes. Okay. And now he's going to come back and fix Franco, but as he's fixing Franco, him and Elizabeth are going to get sparks again. Okay. All right. I'm will, excited. I will take it. Okay. So you can go on YouTube and watch some of the clips about Dr. Ewan, because we're not really going to get too much into his character, but he did a lot. He and did do a he lot. He was only on the show for like a year. Yeah. And he, a lot of what he did is still right. in effect. He caused a lot of havoc and then left for everyone else to deal with. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> but yeah, so we had a nice chat with him and his buddy, uh, Jake B. Miller, stopped in. And so we got to talk with him a little bit, too. So we hope you enjoy getting to know Nathan Butler a little bit better. So how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks so much for, you know, talking with us. And Of course. I'm oh. Shannon. I'm Amanda. Hi, Shannon. Amanda. And we have a General Hospital fan podcast. Even though you're not on the show anymore, you did quite a lot while you were there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, we just want to talk a little bit more, get to know you more as a person and hear more about what you've been doing since and what your time on GH was like. Um, well, uh, what did you think my time on GH was like? <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I, thought you did a... I did have one question. Yeah. So this is going to sound weird, but your body debuted in September, but we didn't see your face until December. Was that actually you like picking Elizabeth up and everything? Or was that a body double? That was actually you? Yeah, it was actually me. And I was kind of, I guess it was kind of nice that they, um, that they did, you know, that those few days for me where we shot it because I didn't have any lines. So there was very little pressure, you know, I could just kind of show up to work and, you know, go in and pick up a girl out of the water and save the day. Um, it was nice. It was a good introduction and a good way to meet everyone without having to like be in my head and having to remember lines and like, be stressed about that I guess so it was a nice little intro to do it so yeah it was me okay it was because sometimes they do that where they're bringing somebody back or bringing someone in and you can tell that it's it's just somebody in the wig sitting there yeah right (laughs) yeah Yeah. especially I can't remember too like what you saw of me was I in like a white shirt I think Mm -hmm. I don't know if it it was all wet and like yeah so they could have used some like really big like you know yeah but I think we seriously only saw like your arms and like maybe your waist, you know, and then you walked away. Yeah. That's, it. yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. But I know you really did do a lot in a little I bit of time. I don't know where I'm to like get started. Down. I'm like, because, <laughs> so you rescued Elizabeth. You knew that Robin was alive when everyone thought she had died in the lab explosion. Mm-hmm. You worked with Jerry, you kidnapped Joss, and you killed John Jacks. Mm-hmm. And you manipulated Connie. Or you brought out Connie, actually. Right. Did you watch General Hospital at all before you started on this? Or did you just walk in and think, like, what the heck is all this stuff I'm affecting? <laughs> I did. I hadn't watched it at all. I just walked into it, you know. Um, but I did go back and watch some and kind of get a little, you know, get a little history on the show. And uh, I think that which was important. But, uh, yeah, I was just kind of coming in cold, which which I guess is is good, too, you know, because I had no, like, preconceived notions of what I was going to do or play I just came in fresh and true had fun you know did you know that you were coming in as kind of a bad guy no and they didn't actually they didn't know that either you know because I came in uh under the the executive producer before 
Frank Valentini, which was uh, Jill. And, you know, we had created my character as, you know, this new psychiatrist and he was going to be, and honestly, I don't know, but if Jill was still exec, I'd probably still be on the show. Um, you know, they kind of created me and I was going to be a, a um, protagonist for the whole, you know, series. And so my contract was kind of open, but then when Frank came on, he bought his actors from One Life to Live. And because I was only a new actor on the show, he was like, sorry, who are you? And it was kind of a bit of a bummer, but um, look, I get, I got to play some cool villain stuff. You know, the, did a lot of villain stuff. <laughs> Frank and Garen kind of ended up writing because they were like, what are we going to do for you? You know, like we have enough protagonists. We really have no room for you. We have, don't have any other love interests for you. And because he wanted to use his actors, you know, for those love interest roles and which I, which I get it, you know, that's showbiz. So I, um, yeah, I got, I got to play some cool villain stuff and, um, you know, was in and out of there and you know since leaving the show i've done some fun stuff too and i've been working on a lot of other things which i guess i probably wouldn't have been able to do those opportunities if i was still on gh but um yeah it was fun it was a fun time and uh you know i was i was a little disappointed when when i was leaving but um say la vie that's love yeah. i would have loved to have seen you and elizabeth develop more because that was that was really good yeah yeah that would have been cool becky she's such such a lovely actress to work with too and you know i feel like we were pretty good friends and had you know had fun and then it all came to a head and actually she was on the chopping block too like we both were yeah yep which you guys probably know we but, do because uh, i guess the fans rallied and complained enough that she stayed i mean and she's so great i'm glad she did i feel like she belongs on that show you know so you said that you've been doing a lot of other projects that you've been able to do what have you done since what have I done since then? So I, um, I mean, since then I was on a, I was on an Australian TV show for years when I finished General Hospital called Winners and Losers. And that was a really awesome show. That was like a primetime Aussie show. So I, I feel like it was a little bit of a bump in, in my career, you know, upwards. And, um, it, it was kind of, uh, Winners and Losers was a little bit like, I guess America's, um, like sex in the city. It was a base, okay. the show is based around four girls who win the lottery. And then they, um, you know, just kind of, it just shows how they spend the money and like the trials and tribulations. You know, it's kind of a dramedy. It's pretty funny. And I was playing, you know, uh, love interest to one of the lead girls. And um, it was fun. You know, was, I got to be home for three years and close to my family and do some Aussie TV. It was, it was a lot of fun. And then I got back here and I've, you know, I've done handful of films and kind of tv shows since you know um which has been great uh i did hawaii 5 last year and earlier this year i did westworld a little bit in that so you know just getting little pieces here and there and hopefully you know something will come along soon it's been quiet but i've been auditioning a bit and um i've actually been writing i've been writing quite a lot and um i can i can show you my um my office but if you can see in here, this is like my vision board for one of my scripts, my episodes, and there's another one up here. I wow. Mean, it's, a little, it's a little bit like the, um, a little, it feels a little bit like a beautiful mind. You know, Russell mm -hmm. Crowe, at least he kind of going mad and yeah. writing on all these walls and stuff. So I've kind of been in writing mode and um, I will be making an Australian TV show eventually. Um, I grew up on a ranch in Australia and... Um, my uh, my dad and his brothers were they were kind of Australian outlaws. They stole a lot of cattle from the government and the Australia right now. Well, in the seventies, the Australia was very much like um, America was in like the eighteen seventies. So horses and gunslingers and it was like the Wild West, but only just you know of recent, like fifty years ago. So oh wow, I'm writing a story about the Australian the Australia kind of Wild West and. I'm going to make this like Aussie Western series. So oh, that's really cool. That's what I'm working on. And uh, yeah, you know, I look forward to, to sharing it with you all once it um, comes to fruition. Is that because um, I saw on your website that you're doing a true crime drama far north. Is that that's, that's what it. that is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So oh, that sounds where, really where I grew up is it's called far north Queensland is the state I grew up in. And it's like the size of Texas and it's all cattle ranches and, 
and Cowboys, you know? And um, so, yeah, I'm just calling the series Far North. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. So what's the biggest difference between American TV and Australian TV? Um, I mean, look, it just it depends on the genres, you know. Um, I, you know, the Aussie humor is, I guess, a little closer to the British humor. It's mm-hmm. like, um, you know, a little more dry, I guess. It's a little more that kind of dry comedy. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's very similar. You know, I think Australia has a obviously it's such a close affiliation with American television, like film and television. And as you see time and time again, like Australian actors, you know, coming across and doing so well in America on the American screens that I I feel like it's pretty similar. Only it's just not as big, you know, over here. This is just, is just such a, you know, it's such a huge market um, for film and tv whereas in australia it's a lot smaller and once you get in though you're kind of in you know like in australia i seem to be working more regularly than i do in the states which i would love for that to change but um i'm yet to get that role you know that that i can win you know play some play in so yeah it has to be really hard getting things right now given how the industry's changed over the past few months yeah. um Is there a lot of new projects coming out or is it just mostly things that were already in the works are finally coming out, but nothing new is really getting started? Look, it's starting to, um, things are starting to pick back up. Um, Yeah, there are some new things, but I think you're right. It's a lot of stuff that has been already currently running. Um, Yeah, actually, I helped my friend with an audition for General Hospital the other day. So, um, Replacing or new character? I think it was a new character. Yeah, you're like, yes. Yeah, no, we've had some shakeups lately, and it's it's not fun. I know, uh, isn't it crazy, right? Yeah, no, it's it is it is quite shocking sometimes the decisions they make. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you just got to go with it. But uh, yeah, he did he did well, and let's hope he gets in there. I, I I always wonder too when I'm reading for because I've helped a few people read for General Hospital, you know, fair few people, and I always wonder if mark teshner the casting director uh, or even frank and when they see the when they test for it if they notice they recognize my voice i will always wonder <laughs> you know yeah yeah well, did he die on screen i didn't no i didn't die on screen no so you can come back i was in the <laughs> right i could i technically could though i don't know i think it's probably pretty unlikely but you, you never know you never know no no you you really don't <laughs> i mean there's been a lot of stuff. So if you could only pick one, acting or writing, which one would you pick? Um, you know, the industry has changed so much. And I feel like nowadays, you know, like it's much less likely to get cast in something big or the competition is so severe and it, there's so many talented actors out there. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people are turning to you know, making their own content and, you know, writing and producing and directing. And it is, you know what, Amanda, it is a lot. It's so, it's so much more fulfilling when you write something and then act in it and or direct it. And it's just, it is a lot more fulfilling. You know, you have more control creatively. And as an artist, you know, I am a storyteller. It, for me, writing is, it does, it fills me up, you know, but but I, I, you know, and I argue when I get a role, I commit to it, like, just as much as I do with my writing, you know, I commit to it to 110%. Like, even when I was on Hawaii Five O, like, yeah, I only had a, like, a guest star, but, you know, the notes I got from the, and the feedback I got from the director and the producers, they were like, you know, you were, they just told me, like, you were incredible. You pop, you stood out in the episode, like, you were, you know, and, like, why not, you know? There's only... You know, there's this famous saying, I forget the famous actor who said it, but there's no small roles, only small actors, you know? And I just think that's a good lesson for in, in anything in life, you know? If you if you give it your all, you know, like, what more can you do, you know? Right, yeah. So, I don't know, to answer your question, I love, I love both, and both do different things, and they both fill me up, but I wouldn't want to do anything else, and I have other businesses and things that I dabble in, but that's my main focus, because it does, it makes me feel so good, you know? And an actor, or do you find it more frustrating, like, you can see it in your head, and they're not acting it out the way that you would want it to go? When I watch actors? Mm-hmm. Say like, for something it. that you produce. 
Oh, something I produced. Um, look, the greatest, the great thing about when you, you know, when you do produce something and you watch a performance, yeah, it can be frustrating sometimes when it, it comes out a different way, but then also like magic can happen and, you know, real, like good actors and talented actors and great actors will bring so much more to the script than you have ever envisaged. So that's, I mean, best case scenario, that's what you want to see. But yeah, of course, oftentimes, you know, you know, you, you feel like your script is, is getting, um, you know, butchered, I guess. But, uh, and, and that's also okay, you know, that's okay. Cause like what it'll be, what it'll be, you know? Right. So, yeah. I had a question halfway through that and I didn't want to be thinking about it. Ah. <laughs> well, you know, cause that's what, you don't want to get busy thinking about your own question that you're not where, listening. Um, where, are you, where are you guys? Oh, we're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You are, you're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are you right now? I'm in LA. Okay. I'm in, uh, yeah, I'm in Woodland Hills. I live in the Valley with my wife and two kids, two dogs. We're, uh, we're pretty happy here, but we're actually thinking about moving back to Australia. Oh yeah. Maybe within a couple of years. And look, the industry's changed so much now that I can audition just like this for something yeah. and be on a plane and, you know, yeah, be, be walking back onto the prospect lot. And, uh, <laughs> that works. Yeah. Uh, we'll write a note. <laughs> write a note. Tell it, let them know. So let them know. I'll, I'll we have a lot for, of notes to send them. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay for my own flight. There you go. Um, I remember what it was. So you did a short film, but I wasn't able to find it. I watched the trailer for it. Oh. But which, I wasn't able which, to find it. It was with you and um, Jake B. Miller. Oh, okay. Yeah, with me and Jake. So yeah, I think you can find it. I haven't put it on Amazon yet because we were still submitting to festivals, but I think it might be the time to do it. Um I might put it on Amazon or there is somewhere you can watch it unless they took it down. It was on a festival website, um, but yeah, it might be kind of hard to find. So maybe, yeah. I'll, maybe I'll upload it. Maybe I'll just put it on YouTube and just put it up for free and then, um, and then send it to you guys. Cause that was fun. That was, that was me and Jake that we went to, um, went to Alabama. I went to Alabama, which is where he lives. And I just went there to kind of, you know, see Alabama and cause I'm a country boy and I thought, Hey, I might, might be into it you know um so i went there and uh i thought you know while we're here why don't we shoot a little movie so i took my camera and i literally we literally wrote something in like two days and then we shot it and i was like i i think it's almost i'll say it's probably 15 minute movie okay and i think it's pretty good it's pretty intense it's pretty heavy it's pretty sad it's very like kind of lower class kind of living guys who have really tough lives and one guy's suffering a very you know uh, um a very uh traumatic illness You're kind of knocking on heaven's door and uh anyway yeah and it's yeah it's a beautiful little story and it's mm -hmm. uh, you know i think it'll it's a bit of a tearjerker but um it's nice yeah so i'll put that up i'll do that put that up yeah because good idea i watched the trailer and then i googled like crazy and could not find it so yeah so do you guys collaborate a lot because i know the last we were supposed to talk a couple weeks ago but you guys got stuck in the mountains and couldn't get any reception so <laughs> i know <laughs> look we do we do collaborate a lot together and if not on scripts and stuff like he's a really good friend we actually just got back from the mountains and he's here right now on his bike and jake he he has been living in the forest for nine months since Corona started, he got on his motorcycle, he packed up like just the essentials that he needed, stuff to keep him warm, a tiny little tent that he could fit on his bike, sleeping bag. And he's been living in national forests all around America for the last nine months. Incredible, right? Well, yeah, that is like five. And I is he documenting him. this? Because I think that would be okay, yeah. great. <laughs> he's documented the whole thing you know it's it's only it's it's on a hard drive it's probably on this computer right here that i'm talking on um <laughs> don't delete it <laughs> yeah yeah but uh he's documented the whole thing and you know yeah he probably has a, a tv show like a docuseries or something um you know about how to survive coronavirus living in a forest on a motorcycle um but he's had i mean just the experiences he's had i mean i spent eight days with him and, you know, just seven nights in the forest, in different forests, you know, along the Sierras, on the east side of the Sierras. And 
I mean, for me, it was a trip of a lifetime. Like it was, um, it was amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's so incredible how, I don't know, it, it was really hard and we suffered a lot, you know, cause it was cold, it was snowing. It was, we went through driving, driving through dust storms, snow storms, rain storms, like camping in that too. And, and it is, it's hard to survive in the wild. And, but in a weird way, the, the through the suffering makes me happy. Like mm -hmm. it's weird to say, but like, I, I always thought life was about like trying to find happiness or being happy, but I feel like life is about finding happiness through the suffering because we're all suffering. If you think about it in yeah. certain ways, right? Like right. in life, we're suffering from, from the time we're born till when we die, we go on this journey of suffering, human suffering. And I think it's about finding the happiness through the suffering. I don't know. That's kind of like my life philosophy now. Nature is a great way to really get a different perspective. Oh, we were like found these hot springs and, you know, just we we're in deserts and mountains and Yosemite. And I, I mean, it's just such a beautiful world out there. You know, you just got to step outside. And, and honestly, a lot of people are scared to do it. And especially right now, like we didn't see many people, you know, which was good, I guess, because it was safe. But it's, I just think more than ever, it's such a good time to like, just get back in nature, you know, like where we came from. So yeah. and I kind of I look like I belong right there. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah are you growing the corona beard or is that this is my like you know what I, this is my um i'm kind of uh i'm kind of growing out this whole thing because i'm embodying and i'm becoming one of these characters in this tv show i'm writing okay. so I'm becoming this australian bushman this australian like cowboy and while I'm writing it, I'm living it, I'm becoming it, I'm reading all my family's stories, my dad's stories, my uncle's stories, and I'm in, as I'm ingesting them, I'm also becoming it, so, and one day, you know, look, I don't know if I'll act in it, you know, I would much prefer, like, all my famous friends star in it, and I just, like, sit on the sidelines, but, I mean, who knows, so, um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing, and it feels good, mm -hmm. I like it. it feels really good, you know, yeah. I, kind of, I kind of feel like myself in it, and um, I don't know for a lot of actors, they struggle with marketing and like they're trying to figure out who they are and what their thing is. And I think I'm finding my thing. I think I'm going back to my roots and I'm going back to my Australian cowboy roots. So that's awesome. That is. Yeah. So is your dad and uncles still with us? My dad isn't, but yeah, my uncles are, and they're still, they're still ranching out in Australia. So yeah, when we do, when we do jump on, you know the the show to shoot it will um i'll have millions of acres and helicopters and thousands of cattle and like i'll have access to like you know all these resources to to make this really cool show so i want to move where there's millions of acres <laughs> just to move to australia that's all there is you done know? <laughs> but 27 million people and australia is bigger than america in the size of the size of the country yeah, there's so much land out there. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, that, that's Jake. I just saw a helmet and I'm like, <laughs> speak of the devil. There's Jake. Hi. <laughs> what are you? I'm doing good. Getting a little uh, Carl Jr. <laughs> <laughs> he was just telling us all about your uh, nature adventures and everything. Oh, yeah. I've been living on a motorcycle for nine months now. Yeah, man. It's been pretty awesome. Traveled the whole U.S., about to do it again. Just trying to find a van because it's so cold. So how far did you get across the U.S.? Uh, I did it a couple of times. I went all the way across the United States from the Pacific Coast to the Atlantic Coast, and then I went to down into Florida and then all the way up into Indiana, Iowa, Illinois all the way across into Montana, up into Washington, and zigzag back across those states, and then back down here, and then I'm probably back, going to go back across. I did 30 states, 35,000 miles. Wow. Yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> right? uh, like, if you get it's awesome it, that you can do that, though. Yeah. Oh, I just, I don't know. I mean, I guess anybody could, really, to be, to be honest, like the way I did it, because I slept in National Forest in a tent. It's not fun, but... I mean, it is fun. It's just hard. 
you know, but you can do it that way. Yeah. Basically subleased my apartment that I was leasing so that I didn't have to pay rent and then stayed in uh, bureau land management places that were free. So I didn't have to pay for that. So it was essentially just gas. Yeah, that old stimulus check kind of kept my gas in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was fun. There could be a second one coming at some point. You never know. <laughs> oh, I'll be back, on the, on the road. back on the road. <laughs> I'm looking at Sprinter vans right now. I'm going to get another bike and a Sprinter van. So, so oh. if you guys have Instagram, it's Moto Mill 2 on there, M O T O M I L L 2. And you can see all of the uh, pictures and the videos because up in the highlights, I uh, documented everything from the start of the trip to the end of it. So, if you guys want to watch it, you can. What was it? M O T O M I L L and the number two, Moto Mill Two. You'll see probably a lot of a lot of me on there too towards the yeah. end of the trip. Yeah. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be kept, some good stuff on I there. I kept trying to take selfies and he'd start streaking in the background. I was like, maybe stop. That's <laughs> not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What made you decide to do that? Did you just wake up one day and say this would be fun, or had you been planning I mean, it for a while? I'm a little bit of a weekend warrior anyway, you know, and I love motorcycles. I always have since I was a kid and, um, COVID happened. I was working on a movie, um, and it shut down when the COVID thing happened, mm-hmm. uh, right in the middle of production. They were like, well, you can't work. You can't audition. Uh, you're stuck in LA, but we're going to give you the stimulus check. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go camping. And my friends was like, how long are you going camping for? I was like, I don't know. And I went maybe a night or two, and I just never came back. <laughs> Stay gone for like nine months now, you know. And I just kind of came back. And nobody really knows I'm here, so. Tell anyone. We'll try to like puzzle your voice or something, and be like, "And we talked to some mystery man." <laughs> Secret safe with me. Jake's actually the one who auditioned for General Hospital, so. Oh yeah. You guys should put a good word in for him and say, uh, "Hey, we heard this Jake guy's a good actor." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they have me coming in all the time. Mark's uh, auditions me he's, quite a He's bit. read for it so much. Yeah. They must like you, though, so. Yeah, they're just trying to find the right part for you. I think so. Yeah. I like that. Well, that's what I've heard a lot of the actors say. They read for so-and-so. They read for so-and-so, but then they got called back, and the person that they wound up being, it's them. You know, it's, because um, I think Jason read for AJ, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. Steve Burton read for AJ, but this was in the early '90s, and I don't think AJ was around when you were. So mm, yeah, we'll but see. now like you can't picture him as anybody else. So no. right, create the role for you. Yeah, yeah. So where are you guys located? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, I almost bought a van there today. <laughs> you want to buy a house? I can help you with that. I'm a real estate agent. Oh uh, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. You can put some wheels on it. I can't say sell manufactured homes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just sold one. <laughs> I was actually uh, going to buy a motorcycle from Allentown. Isn't that close to where you're at? It's kind of close, yeah. Allentown? Yeah. Yeah, it was um, on auction. I guess it was part of a drug raid. Oh, nice. I was going to sound like we actually have a lot of those. Do other states <laughs> do that? <laughs> do other states like auction off vehicles and stuff like that the way that ours does? I have, yeah. it's, a, it's a state yeah, yeah, nationwide thing. Okay, okay. Well, good. So it's not just us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I know a lot of people who have bought, they're like, oh, yeah, I got it from the police auction. And it's like, do you get the story with it? Mm-hmm. You know, what happened? So I guess that kind of answers that. Yeah. I actually kind of got turned on to that by um, one of the guys that I met along this whole trip who we became friends in an event called the Gambler 500, which is this bizarre, like, burning man with like 500 dollars cars where you drive it all across the nation like you you, you, you there's a group called <clears throat> gambler 500 and they take 500 hundred dollar cars and they try to ride them 500 miles off road okay it's an organization they they're all around the u.s and they try to um also like clean up trash while they're doing it so that's kind of the humanitarian side of it and so i met those guys and one of them was a repo man and i went on a repo with him and recorded all it was hilarious and uh, we, the guy's car that we repoed was a, like a major felon. And like he had a huge arrest report and it all showed up. And it's like, oh, and he's like, go, 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 go. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> we just like bolted. It was so funny. Wow. Three o'clock in the morning. Did you drive the car? Oh, no. 
No, 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 but I, he wanted me to get out. Like we, we backed up and pulled it out of the, Oh, uh, you towed it. We towed it out of a hotel, but it, we didn't even like unlock the, you know, he, we ran up there, put the jacks under the car and, you know, didn't even unlock it to take the brakes off and just started dragging it. He's like, I don't want anybody to come out. Like it was so weird because this, this happened in Oregon and the police, no, it was in Washington. And the police were right there when we did it. And when they saw the tow truck backing up to the car, they left. They like wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. Nope. No drama. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It is. I met a lot of interesting people. Yeah. So we were talking before you came in about um, the short film that you guys had done together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which one? We did too. Nothing God can say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm like, because I, I couldn't remember the name of it for whatever reason I didn't write it down. What's the other one that you did? Um, we did another one. We actually haven't named it yet, but it's a comedy. Um, and I don't know. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> it's like a spoof on an old, you know, like an old spaghetti western. And um, Jake plays, you know, like the Clint Eastwood type character. And I play this like New York kind of mobster, like mafia mob kind of guy. And okay. it's, we got it in the middle of the desert and it's very much like a standoff kind of gunslinger uh, comedy. But you think it's kind of serious for a second, but then it just turns like really, really absurd. And we do some hilarious stuff with yogurt. So. <laughs> well, now you have to upload it so that we can see this. And... Well, we're gonna, we're gonna edit it first, but yeah, once we've edited okay. it, then we'll, um, then we'll send, we'll put it online. And I'm also working on that edit that, um that episode that Nathan was actually because again I documented that whole dirt bike stuff and so we had a whole little bit where we went to Vegas and Death Valley and yeah edit that together. Vegas was pretty funny yeah, that's was, awesome a little un unscripted stuff it's crazy place yeah. so how did you guys meet like how did you become friends Jake was um <laughs> Jake was seeing one of my um wives uh girlfriends yeah. and uh they just came around one night you know i'm here i'm at home with the kids and they were out drinking at malibu wines and she called me up and said oh hey do you mind if i bring some dudes home i'm like mm, I, <laughs> okay sure right. like no don't worry you really like one of them he's from alabama and he's a country boy you probably like it so and uh yeah you know the next minute we're here and then you were in alabama with me yeah then we went out to alabama shot a movie and that's life huh Rest was history. That's it. I'm sorry, awesome. I'm so that I'm grubbing in front of you, but I didn't even. It's get okay. It. <laughs> I bolted like I was like, I gotta get some, something. You yeah. spent nine months in nature, you know. I mean, how much fast food did you eat, or did you oh, eat when I was off the there. land most? Yeah. Um. No, I got real creative. I mean, you know, because I think it, it, and the, it kind of evolved. The first of the trip, I was like, I have to do dry foods, you know, like rice. I would do canned chili on top of ramen, which, by the way, is fantastic if you haven't tried it try okay. that it's so good but i was doing all canned foods and then i went on a camp camping trip in idaho with my brother along this whole trip and he's got a van and dirt bikes and he's like where are your vegetables i was like what do you mean why don't you have vegetables like dude i'm not going to carry like stuff that's going to ruin he's like vegetables will stay for like a week you know that right and i was like hmm. never even thought about that and so then i started adding vegetables to the mix and then uh, probably like three months in, I like walked into Walmart and I saw one of those cheap little cooler bags. Because in my brain, I was like, there needs to be something to keep this stuff like electronically cooled. I don't have room to pack anything else. But then I saw one of those little little soft bag coolers. They're like five mm -hmm. bucks. Not the like boxing ones because I can't fit it on the bike. Right. Um, okay well i could do that and then i sent and i started cinching that on there and then i didn't want to use ice because it melts and it creates this big mess so i get frozen food and then mix it in with the, the meats and then just as long as i was eating it by the end of the day you know i couldn't keep it for a couple of days but depends on you know where i was if i was doing like a day trip i would go and i could cook some meat and stuff like that and grill it out there you go we manage i mean the food we took when we were up in uh up at the east sierras there i mean a lot of it stayed cold one night it even froze like everything froze like we had water a big like water bag that you'd filter from the creek he had like a he has like a water filtration system that he can get clean water from anywhere and 
we like filtered some and then by morning it was like frozen solid like tapped it it's like rock hard as i there was icicles inside my tent oh but yeah the food i think also like that kind of stuff depends because on the weather when i was in metropolis it was 110 degrees 115 degrees so it would be no there's no way depends on where you know you're kind of like it when you're on a motorcycle in a tent you're like a duck you gotta migrate with the weather you just hailstorm, rain, snow, sand. When we were in the desert, we got caught. In, it was probably like within an hour, we were in a sandstorm, a snowstorm, rain, gale force winds, temperatures of like 12 degrees. And then all of a sudden it was like 75 and crystal clear. It was so bizarre. Beautiful. That sounds like Pittsburgh weather almost. <laughs> 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 joke that like you you have all four seasons in one day like you wear a sweater and boots and everything in the morning and by the time you're coming home from work you're in a tank top <laughs> if you don't yes. like the weather wait five minutes yeah right exactly exactly so what's going on with y'all how long have you had the show for about a year and a half yeah yeah That's so it's good. been interesting <laughs> it's been yeah. fun yeah well, stuff like this just happens where you just wind up being able to talk to some of the current or former cast members and learn more about, you know, behind the scenes and future, because future right. cast oh, members. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'll be on there eventually, right, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I forget. Yeah, like, it's just fun getting to know. Oh, so why did you even come over to the United States? Me? Um, I came over here in 2008, the first time. Okay. I think I was doing some ADR for a show called um, The Pacific, which was a HBO. That was HBO, yeah. Yeah, which is that Hanks Spielberg series. Um, and then I kind of, you know, I wanted to check it out and look around a bit and get an agent. And so I kind of came back and forth a little bit, 2008, 2009. Then 2010, I kind of thought I'd, I'd stay here and try it out, you know, mm-hmm. as a home which I did but uh yeah I was back and forth for a little bit but uh that's that's kind of the reason why I came over and you know when I graduated drama school I just for some reason I just wanted to I was just like you know what I want to go I want to go to America I want to go to LA I just you know it, it was calling me whatever it was I was like I'm gonna do it and I was 20 years old just fresh out of college I was like let's go so yeah and did you meet your wife here? I met my wife here. Yeah, I met her. You know, that was right in the middle of my general hospital days. And she, uh, yeah, I met her at a pool party downtown LA. You know, I was um, I was on cloud nine, you know, like, you know, big TV actor, having, having the time of my life, <laughs> living large. And uh, yeah, met Irina. And um, yeah, I think the, from the day I met her, I think, you know, we didn't, really spend another day apart since you know the day I met her till now I mean we have obviously here and there lately but it was I guess I, I'm I could say almost for a, almost a solid year we probably didn't spend a day apart so um it was kind of fun then I took her to Australia I proposed to her in Australia um yeah it was cool she's a good one it's a beautiful name too Irina, Irina. Yeah. yeah she's Ukrainian so it is um okay. it is uh like a Russian Ukrainian name yeah that was the only other question I had. I forgot. <laughs> that's funny that came to you right in the I know. I'm like, sorry. Yeah, that's the last. And like, how'd you get here? <laughs> I knew I went wrong. So, so you guys like do the um, interviews just for General Hospital mostly, or and how'd you um, get, how'd you guys get into it? How'd you get started? So we've been friends since 2012. We were Girl Scout moms together, Aww. and mm-hmm. as the girls were Girl Scouting, the moms sit around and talk and. I think I what I said something about I needed to watch General Hospital. Amanda's like, oh my gosh, so do I. <laughs> and so the text started. And it just kind of my husband has a wrestling podcast too. Oh, all right. And um he seemed to have a lot of fun with it. And he kind of encouraged us and we kept saying, Oh, we should do something like that. Yeah. I think we put it off for like two years though. It was a while. Like, it, was, yeah. it was a while. Yeah. Um, and then it just came to us. So every Monday we do a recap of the week's previous like the previous week shows and then on thursdays we release what's called the port charles 411 which is either an interview or like a subject like a backstory if they mention something that happened you know 20 years ago then we'll research it and talk about it so the newer watchers know what's going on oh very cool just wow. stuff like that and um we did just interview vincent irizari from all my children even though he wasn't on general hospital 
Mm -hmm. Anna Devane had gone over to all my children and she was married to him over there. Mm. And then she came back to general hospital. So we just did like a month about Anna Devane. So we had to do that little hop. So you guys are all up to date on everything. Basically. Try to be, yes. <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Um, okay. What do you think about the episodes and how they've changed since COVID started? And the reason I ask this is very okay. specific. Um, I was trying to kind of prepare and I was watching some of the newer episodes. And I noticed like the kissing scenes are like this. <laughs> and, then yeah, and then it's like a and then it's like a flash, but they're right. touching each other, or it's like they're kissing a mannequin or something. Have you guys noticed that? Oh yeah. <laughs> How can you not? Yeah. <laughs> I think okay. when they first came back, it was they've got I feel like they've gotten a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. But I think I did you watch the Franco kissing Ava in the art gallery? Yeah. Yes. Is that the one that you watched? Because that's exactly how it did. <laughs> so awkward. It was awful. It was like <laughs> why even why even do it? It was like a and it was like a picture, like they took a picture and then, yeah. just, and then it jumped into another scene. You know? Like I, I would rather I'd rather them just hug. Like have so, a really authentic, real hug. Right. Like that's that's like, you know, you're very close to someone it's but you know if you're gonna try to avoid this corona thing and get around it artistically like at least i don't know it was weird wasn't it that was hands down <laughs> that was the, the worst, worst you one. did you watched the worst one um they have done pretty well so on the same episode you should have seen nicholas kissing elizabeth i did i did I and he kind of just pulled her in and then they did it again yeah, right. that was a little bit better. But they have got better. There was an episode last week where it was setting it up for two people to make love, and it showed him, like, climb on top of her and then cut away. So they didn't get into that awkward, exactly how are they going to get it on. They just, you got that idea. So. I don't remember which one, but there was a daytime that I watched that um, they <clears throat> you, he was he was just going to town on a mannequin. And you could tell because it wasn't moving. Oh, oh my gosh. I'd rather have him just cut away than to... <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> I, just, well, I, just, I don't know. It's entertaining. I just like I, I kind of. I'll re, I, when I saw that, I rewound it and watched it like five times. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's. I know that they have to do what they have to do, but you're right. I mean, there's certain camera angles. Um, Cameron and Joss were good. Yeah, yeah, and they were teenagers. So look for Cameron and Joss kissing. Right. Okay. They Maybe were the teenagers. They did, a little less. Uh, they pulled it off. Huh? They're a little less scared. Probably too. Yeah. A little more bold. Well, the worst is when they really slow down and they just don't cut away. And it's just like, okay, you, you at least have to, like, once they get here, you have to cut away because just being stuck there, you're just like, okay. You know? Yeah. I know. I mean, and I used to struggle with that too, coming onto it was like, they said at the end, we're not going to say cut. We're just going to keep rolling. And we just want you to be as still as possible. <laughs> I'm like, it's so weird like you end yeah. a scene you're like talking you're talking you're talking like and then <laughs> that's it like i can just do that so it's they really so make you do that it's so unnatural and the camera's just yeah right <laughs> i could never or the thinking it. like the hmm you know yeah the oh, thinking or there's something i would always you know come out of it and be like well we can't use it now there's nothing to slowly zoom in on and i'm like right good <laughs> <laughs> now that was a really good question though to yeah and we totally make fun of that stuff as much as we're fans we call them not all sure all stuff yeah stuff you there's, got it. there's no way to not talk about like why did they even bother so right you got to it was nice how they did the nurse's ball though because are you familiar with the nurse's ball i don't think they might be i was gonna say i'm like i don't think you were no i don't know oh it was gone it was on hiatus it wasn't until the next year that it came back wasn't oh, it wow. i think something anyway so it's like this annual um it's kind of like a talent show that they do every year and typically they have it you know there's a stage and then there's small tables all around well they couldn't do it this year that was they turned it into a telephone mm. so they had some of the participants just in t-shirts at different tables taking phone calls taking donations and the person performing was on stage by themselves telethon style so that was really creative mm -hmm. and we were still able to get that but i think overall they're doing really well with how they're shooting and everything you do notice that people are they're not mixing stories as much as they were you're definitely getting like two or three a week right. <clears throat> and i think that's so like you guys can 
all act at the same time and not have to have, worry about so much cross. I mean, I think it's I don't want to say contamination, but honest because there's so so many productions that aren't, you know, and they're getting pushed back and stopped and held up. So yeah, I think it's impressive. Yeah, I think so fans, too. and hopefully you join, and then we'll have to talk to you again about how it's going. Yes. Yeah, it'd be awesome. I'd love that. There you go. You can enter, or you can interview. <laughs> Audition again to bring you and back from the dead, and yeah, right. Or he could have a he could have a good brother. They always bring in the evil brother. They right. bring in a good brother. Yeah, I was already evil. Yeah, I could be a good brother. Well, yeah, right. evil. Mm. I'm gonna, I can feel it. You should yeah. go into YouTube and watch his clips. They're good. I saw a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. He did some messed up stuff. <laughs> I didn't. I get to see all the, like the whole storyline. Just I, you know, he's right. Yeah, I saw some of the shirtless stuff. You know, <laughs> that's mainly all you'll see online. Yeah. <laughs> kidnapped a kid. What's that? I did kidnap a kid. I kidnapped a kid. Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Jerry. You know, I was being led down the garden path. Exactly. A bad man. Yeah. So you got to. You have to catch up. You have to get to know this stuff if you're coming on the show. We all have to get back and and see what they did. You have to watch. You got You got a lot to watch. There's a lot of episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this was this was great. You know, please. Please upload those videos so that we can watch them. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, finally will. Um, so nice to see you guys. And uh, do yeah. it's nice to meet you too, Jake. It's nice to meet you guys. Good luck with all your traveling, and please be safe. And hopefully, right. hopefully we see you on the screen again soon. Yeah, you might see me riding around in a Sprinter van or a motorcycle. In your there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. All right, guys. Bye. Take care. And uh, see ya. Bye. 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 I feel like we always come back by saying, oh my gosh, that was so fun. But that really was fun. <laughs> it was really not fun. I want to get a motorcycle and I go know. tour the country now. And I didn't want to get into it when he's like, well, you can. And it's like, yeah, we have kids. <laughs> right, right. We don't have the time or the money or the bike to just abandon our lives and go do. I mean, we talk about it all the time. Like, wouldn't it be great if we could just leave and then we go through the logistics of, but family. Right. We can't even get away for a weekend, let alone... Yep. Nine or ten days, which is what they started out with. Nine months, though. Yeah. Could you imagine? But do you know what I love the most is that they went to Alabama and just decided to write a film and did it, and here we are. Right. They are very spur of the moment, obviously. Yeah. So we actually recorded this a little while before releasing it. So if anything has happened in the time since, sorry. Right. But it should be up on YouTube by now, hopefully. Well, I don't know if he said YouTube, but, you know, look for... The short film that he talked about with it's I knew the name of it and has something to do with gold. Didn't you have it written down? No. Are you sure? I didn't. I feel like you did. I didn't. Okay. It was Far North is the name of his true crime drama but not it's something gold. Nothing gold can stay. Nothing gold can stay. There you go. So hopefully that's up on there and go take a look but he was fun. I kind of feel bad that you know he had a good character. He did have a good character. And I'm telling you, we could use them back. And I just solved all the problems. But I like Franco and Liz. But he were... did have a great chemistry, though. Exactly. And it will take them time to develop that story. So by the time that the sparks are flying, you'll love him again anyway. But he's going to come back and be like, wait, 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 wait. You were in Shady Brook because you just lost your son. And now he's alive? True. There will be some explaining to do. But it'll all work out. Okay. He can pull from his psychiatrist training that he's no longer using because he's doing now a two more surgeries and help her realize those feelings that she may not have dealt with. Oh, geez. There you go. You're welcome. Okay. I wrapped it up. It's perfect. There you go. There's a little package that Amanda's created for you. Mm -hmm. But we should get Jake B. Miller on the show. Yes. And I think it's really sweet that even though he had been let go from the show, contract not renewed, whatever it was, you know, his character died. Right. But off scene, so we can bring him back. Exactly. But he's still helping his friends. Yes. You know. And encouraging them to be part of GH because yes. it's so good. Yes. So that's great. Yes. And we could use some more hot men, so I'm all for it. Okay. <laughs> Gold star for that idea. <laughs> bring all the hot men back. <laughs> that's quite the list. <laughs> and hot women. There's a lot of hot women that have been gone, too. I mean, I don't mind if they come back, but. But you know what? I hadn't thought about the fact that, I mean, we knew that Elizabeth was on the chopping block. I didn't, realize I didn't think about it at the same time either. Yep. Yeah, once he said that. Oh yeah, we knew that. So there was a time where he held Elizabeth, where you and held Elizabeth hostage. Mm -hmm. Was that possibly... Oh, they were both like, going to like, blow was up Was he going to kill her and then he would be suicide by cop? Yeah, I don't know. Would have been a good storyline, but then we would have lost them. So no, I'm glad we took it the other direction. Yeah. Thank goodness they didn't do that to him though, because that's how Xander died. Yeah. Jeez. 
guys, we get really ridiculous with some things. Can we get a little bit more creative with others? Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, it was it was fun. They're both on social media, so feel free to find them. Nathan is I-N, not A-N. Right. And, so, yeah, join us on Monday as we talk about this week's episodes. Have a good weekend. And we'll meet you with a peer. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.